it you is know. time for our <laughs> panel rants and raves of the week. And I'll start with Tom Peebler. Well, last week there was a discussion, obviously a, a very important discussion, about Lara Logan and uh, the Benghazi story that ran on 60 Minutes. Uh, and uh, so this, this, my rant today may fall into the category of riding over the hill and shooting the wounded. But I do think that uh, they're, they're given now in the wake of her apology on 60 Minutes uh, whether something more has to be done, whether that was adequate. I think there, what, we have some a little clip, of the clip yeah. on this. Yeah. On Thursday night, when we discovered the account he gave the FBI was different than what he told us, we realized we had been misled, and it was a mistake to include him in our report. For that, we are very sorry. So I think, you know, what you have is uh, that's step one. You, you have to own the story, you have to own the mistake, and you have to apologize for making it. But, but uh, I, I have to ask, what happens mm -hmm. the next time Lara Logan goes on the air with a report? And I think the answer is her credibility at this point is, um, if, if not at a very low level, uh, frankly, I think it's probably shot. And the, uh, uh, I'm, I remember in 1992, I think it was, NBC on their Dateline show uh, did this oh, yeah. story about mm -hmm. they rolled a car exploding. into a Jeep, the exploding. Mm -hmm. It turned out they had rigged the explosion. They kind of Michelle doctored Gilman, the camera. Yes. Michelle yeah, and uh, Michelle Gillen, and uh, she, even though she had objected to the report in the pre-production stage, apparently her, her yeah. objections weren't strong yeah. enough, she was sent to Miami yeah. as a co-anchor, yeah. and it did very well after that. But the president of NBC was fired, Michael Gardner yeah, lost right. his job, and the producers on that show lost their jobs, and uh, those are the kind I of consequences I expect. Go. We did do, uh, discuss do. this last yeah. week, and actually a couple of people pushed back at us and said they weren't we didn't feel we were tough enough. I thought we were pretty pretty hard on, on the on the mistake. How, how, how could it have gotten to that point? What I said was they didn't need that guy mm -hmm. to make that report. It was an excellent report, and he only added color commentary. If they'd just taken him out completely, they would have had a terrific report. Mm -hmm. Well, there's other aspects of the report that are now being picked apart oh. as well. So this this is still kind of in mid-flight, yeah. I think. Oh, too bad. All right, Dan, mm -hmm. what do you got? Uh, I have a rave for the uh, Patriot News of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and this is kind of a funny one. Um, during the Civil War, when, uh, oh, yeah. when, when a predecessor paper, the Patriot and News, uh, I'm sorry, the Patriot and Union, uh, ran an editorial uh, very disdainful of Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, which he gave in that mm -hmm. area. Uh, they referred to it as his silly remarks, which will soon be, uh, uh, we hope, forgotten by history. And, of course, it's gone down as the most famous speech in yeah. American history. So uh, this week they published a, um, a retraction and an apology, and they did it in good humor. I mean, it yeah, began not? with, uh, 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 f you know, four score and yeah, 70 yeah. years ago. They said they wanted to do it on the 125th anniversary mm. uh, as well, but they couldn't get enough support internally to do it. <laughs> oh, but God. now on the 150th, they're doing yeah. it. Hope it sells some, some new newspapers. All right, Callie, what do you got? I have a rave for Brian Stelter, who has been a fabulous uh, media reporter for the New York Times. He's leaving to go to CNN. This is uh, bad news for the Times. Comes on the heels of their losing many, uh, about five or six other, you know, really top-notch people who have developed their own following. Um, the, I'm raving for Brian because it's he's got to have the deal of life. He's going to report across all CNN platforms, and he's going to host Reliable Sources, which was until June, last June, hosted by Howie Kurtz, who left to go to Fox. So, and he's guest hosted on there. He's been okay. I mean, he's... He's you know, okay. He's okay. He's not, he's not fabulous, he's not but, really you know, he'll, he's not a TV guy. He'll, but that's not why they hired him. I know. That's the least of it. They hired him to, to bring all of that inside information and those contexts and that Rolodex that he has for the, all of his media stories. Now, what I worry about, if, he's, if, as they say, he's reporting daily, yeah. when does he have a moment to step back yeah. to do the kind of work that we've come to appreciate? Uh, from him at the New York Times, but yeah. we'll see. He's in the Times twice a day as it is. Yeah. I don't uh -huh. think it'll be any big deal to him. Oh, well, we'll see. All and right. I think Brian's going to be great at that, but I think there's also the Times is also going to be fine. There's been a bit of a commentary this week about, oh, everyone's leaving the Times. There's still a long line of people who would love to work there. So. <laughs> I'm sure. All right, Josh, what do you got? Uh, this week, uh, a, a judge made a final ruling, or a ruling, not a final ruling, on a law, an eight-year-old lawsuit uh, between uh, authors and Google over whether or not Google Books is allowed to exist, basically. If you're not familiar with Google Books, it basically goes 
to a variety of libraries, including Harvard, Harvard Library, and scans in old out of copyright books as well as others that are not in copyright and makes them searchable. The same thing that Google Web Search does for everything on the internet, they're aiming to do for books. Authors uh, claimed that they, des they needed to be paid for this. Um, the court said no. Actually, Google can go ahead with it. It falls under fair use. It's sufficiently transformational. And uh, while I can understand the, some of the arguments of the authors, on the other hand, Google Books is an extraordinary resource. It's opened up, you know, all these wor words that have otherwise been trapped on paper and on shelves of libra university libraries. It's an, an astounding. Right, is this a rant or a rave? This is a, totally. This is absolutely a rave. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm thrilled about this. Um, you know, there's still more litigation to come, but I think it's a wonderful step forward for uh, for all of us who are interested in human knowledge. It's a really good good or organization. All right. Great. All right. Um, did you want to comment on that? I agree. I rave as well. <laughs> okay. Good, good, good decision. All right. I have a rave for the Boston Globe and a bit of a mea couple for us because last March, when the Boston Globe first reported the possibility that the Olympics might be coming to Boston or there'd be a push for them in 2024, it really felt like something that they had ginned up as, you know, this is a great idea and this is an old team and this is all right, great for us and all that. But now, this week, the Globe had a full story with all the people, Mitt Romney and John Fish and Jack Connors and everybody who had actually come together to formulate this team, uh, bringing the, uh, and they had the, they had the goods, so we have to eat a little crow there because we were making fun. The threat is real. Yeah. <laughs> you were making fun. <laughs> I think I had a little help with that. <laughs> all right, that is it. For Beat the Press, are you ready for news drones buzzing around the city? Do you think the Washington Post should drop Richard Cohen? Tell us what you think at BeatThePress.org. Monday on Greater Boston, Tom Patterson writes in his new book, Informing the News, that journalists are often ill-informed and gin up controversy. Really? Okay. <laughs> he joins us. Plus, an investigative report reveals that despite an alleged crackdown on Johns, they aren't getting arrested for soliciting prostitutes. That and more Monday for all of us. I'm Emily Rooney. Thanks for watching.